that's this is what Neptune is inheriting, man. I mean, when Jay Wright took Villanova over, it had made one tournament in Lapis's final four seasons. That was an eight seed, one and done showing in '99. And then Wright went 52 and 46 in his first three seasons. Didn't sniff the tournament in any of those. And then since 0405, Nova made the tournament every single year except one, 2011, 2012. Um, and even there was no tournament in 2020, but Nova was like a two seed then. So the standard is very, very high. Uh, I think the level of expectation here for Neptune GP is to keep Nova. I think the level of expectation for your average informed Nova fan watches most of the games could tell you the starting five. I think the expectation is, listen, uh, you're taking over for a legend, best coach in school history uh, for as long as you're here, whether four years or 25 years, just keep Villanova unquestionably in the top three in the big East, you know, end the year we are a one, two or three seed in the big East tournament. Uh, every single season. I think that's what he is tasked with. He's not tasked with winning national championship. He's not tasked with getting to multiple final fours yet. He's a young coach taking over a tough job. The question is, can he do it this season? Go ahead and run down the rest of the roster here and what you think for the, for the listeners here. But I actually find this to be a relatively intriguing team coaching assignment in year one because some, some of these teams we're talking about, they're not going to live up to expectation. And I'm, I'm just I'm going to sell a little bit on the notion that Villanova, for as good as it's been, will automatically keep everything humming and just, you know, strut to a two, three or four seed in the tournament. Well, let's start with the good. Um, they are bringing back three projected starters who averaged at least 25 minutes per game last season for a final 14. That's Caleb Daniels, uh, Brandon Slater, and Eric Dixon. So that's a, a, a good place to start. Obviously, the, the big question is, when is Justin Moore going to be available? And what's he going to look like? You know, John Fanta reported, um, I believe earlier this week, that Justin Moore is aiming to return like late December, early January. That, that's, that's what, you know, uh, by all accounts, rehab's going great. Um, and he wants to be back by late December, early January. But, like, what will he look like when mm -hmm. he's back in late December, early January after missing an entire offseason and then trying to join uh, a team, you know, midseason on a relatively quick timeline? I mean, he didn't tear this until, like, late March. Correct. That's a pretty, you know, I, I, I know that he's, Justin Moore has talked to Kevin Durant about coming back from this injury, talked to John Wall about coming back from this injury, but they didn't come back from it this quickly. And so, you know, it, you know, I, I hope, I hope when he comes back, he looks exactly like he was when he left because what he was when he left, I mean, was somebody who could reasonably be a first team all American preseason, you know, this season, I mean, he averaged 15 points per game last season, five rebounds shot, almost 36 percent from three he's really good really good and not only do you lose him, this is like the, if you want to sell on Villanova and I'm not clearly I, I've, I've got him as a top 20 team and in, in second in the Big East but they lose Colin Gillespie and just you know Justin Moore's supposed to step in and just be the primary point guard yeah, can't expect that no 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 I know and so like you yeah. The the plan was lose Colin Gillespie, bring back Justin Moore. Now you lose Gillespie and Moore for much of the season and, you know, a Hall of Fame level coach. I'm a believer in Cal Neptune. He did a nice job at, at Fordham in his one season there. Yes. You know, eighth in the Atlantic 10, that might not sound like much, but that's overachieving at Fordham in the Atlantic 10. Fordham it's, is the anti-Villanova. <laughs> yeah, it's the best finish for Fordham in the A-10 since 2016. Uh, he was on staff at Villanova for eight years before he went to Fordham. He was a part of both of Villanova's national championship teams. He was a, on staff for both of those teams and then did a good job. It is interesting, though, like at, at Duke, the program, this incredible program being handed to somebody who's you know in his 30s at Villanova, this incredible program being handed to Cal Neptune, 37 years old. Um, it's going to be one of the more interesting stories in, in, in college basketball, watching these relatively speaking young and inexperienced guys take over big, big brands. Um, but I'm a believer in Cal Neptune. That said, like, you'd be kind of crazy to think losing Jay Wright just doesn't matter, right? Jay Wright's an all-time great, an all-time great. So you're replacing Colin Gillespie, at least for much of the season, the Justin Moore we knew, and – 
you know, a Hall of Fame coach. Uh, that's a lot. But assuming Caleb Daniels can handle a, a larger role uh, and and you know and and become the the leader in the in that backcourt, uh, Jordan Longino uh, probably maybe steps into the starting lineup in that backcourt with them, uh, alongside Brandon Slater, who's a super senior. And you got Eric Dixon in the middle, and then the five-star freshman Cam Whitmore, you know, you know, uh, on the wing. You know, it's a it's a sort of a small ball, not unlike you know lineup that Villanova has flourished with. Uh, but you got three very experienced guys from a championship level team and a five-star freshman. That's that's a pretty good place to start. Although, man, not having Justin Moore to start the season and not knowing what he's going to be when he is ready to play, that that. If you told me Justin Moore was that never happened, and he's on this team, preseason top ten team, I think easy. I'm probably right there with you. Uh, that's why I'm selling a little bit on Villanova. Is I don't, I just don't know. I I don't know what Justin Moore will win. It like as you said, he told Fanta he's hoping around the start of Big East play, late December, early January. That's the hope. Maybe he gets there. Maybe he's not there till January fifteenth, right? And then. How what what percentage is he playing at? Because he's not going to be 100 percent when he comes back right away. They're not getting Justin Moore of the March 17th Justin Moore. It's just not going to happen there. So I, I just want to see what he is there now. Uh, a lot of the you, you just nailed what I was going to say. Uh, a lot of the small ball, like I, a lot of what I mean, Dixon is just a glue guy he just looks like hell to to have to handle in the paint right like and and daniels is, is also similar like he's the daniels is you know a, another classic villanova guard who can just post you up and 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 put you on the block and, and kick your ass i i, I do like that that's but, by design by the way they don't just yeah, uh they don't just right. have these the post up point guards they like they really prioritize that and i think jalen brunson was like one of the best at it yeah, for sure. And and Gillespie had a ton of that to his game yeah. as well. So so we'll see how we'll see how deep the team is. I mean, right. We talked about UCLA's depth on the previous episode. You know, Jay Wright for a lot of for many of his seasons at Villanova, like he didn't go more than six or seven guys getting significant minutes. We'll see if that continues with Neptune in charge. I I don't know. Also, you mentioned Whitmore. You know, he's a projected lottery pick right now. Villanova has not had freshmen or didn't have freshmen under Jay Wright, who for the most part didn't have to play with minutes restrictions, adversity, because there's also, again, the Villanova culture, which will be another thing. Like, Neptune comes in, takes over. Will the factory kind of continue to run itself to a certain extent with just the the way that Jay Wright and Neptune was a part of that? There's a, there's a decent chance that winds up happening. You have all these guys, Daniel Slater back, Dixon back, Chris Archidiakono. Yes, he's still on the roster. He'll be back there. So, yeah. There could be something to that, um, but I want to see, and I got to see what Justin Moore looks like once he once he gets there. So because of that, um, and I'll get to our our final regular season over under here in just a second. There, um, I I think, or at least my prediction will be, Villanova is going to be a successful team that makes the NCAA tournament with plenty of room to spare and is in the AP re- rankings for plenty of the season. But I wouldn't be stunned if it has a, some fits and starts until more arrives and they're just trying to figure this stuff out. But if Whitmore is a stud, like if he really is a lottery pick, which we just haven't had out of Villanova from a fre- I want to be clear from a freshman like that doesn't happen normally. We'll see if if uh, if Neptune really lets him fly. And if that does happen, then that could be that could be something that changes the game.